Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to 2016. Uh, welcome back to my channel for hopefully another year of fantastic content. Uh, and welcome to this brand new flow video. I said 2015 is kind of my birth of what I really want to do on YouTube and 2016 will be an expansion of that with more high production videos. I'm just really excited because I already have a load of videos that I want to do and uh, that I'm currently working on. What? You want to fight me? Okay. Okay, he wants to be in the video. And I feel like these next five to six videos are going to be proof with even better quality videos and just new ideas that I want to do for the channel. Welcome to the first flow video of 2016. And today I want to talk about game review scores. Can you stop? Jesus. If we fail, we lose our chance of revenge. That's why you have to handle this mission yourself. Burn with the rest of them. In one of my previous flow videos, Open World Fatigue, I asked my viewers a simple question. What do they see when they see 10 out of 10? Do you see perfect, masterpiece, game of the year, maybe even greatest game of all time? When I see a 10 out of 10, I see perfection. I see a perfect score. Now the response I got back from this question was one of confusion and disagreement. I stated that for me a 10 out of 10 means perfection, it means that a game masters everything that it set out to do and has no flaws whatsoever. And there were some people that were confused that I never gave a game a 10 out of 10. As I stated there's no such thing as a perfect game. Ultimately what we have here is the difference between qualitative and quantitative. Quantitative is related to or measuring by the quantity of something rather than its quality, and qualitative is relating to the quality of something rather than the quantity of this. And a couple of months ago on Twitter, I asked my followers if I should add review scores to my reviews. And believe it or not, a big majority of them actually said yes. They agreed that it was okay for me to add review scores as long as they were logical and they didn't seem far fetched and the review still went into detail as to the reasoning behind that said scoring. The first game that I reviewed was Until Dawn which I gave I believe around an 8.7. Now the funny thing about this being my first review was barely anybody in the comment section even noticed the change nor brought it up at all and I think this was due to the fact that Until Dawn didn't really have a lot of hype or high expectations so when people saw the review score there wasn't really anybody debating it nor really caring but when September hit now that's when things got very, very interesting. As I'm sure all of you know, Metal Gear Solid 5 released in September of 2015, and while it was received with universal acclaim and many critics praising the game, calling it a masterpiece and a 10 out of 10, I was confused by this after playing the game for 30 hours on my own. Things in my personal opinion weren't adding up that reviewers weren't even mentioning at all about the game that I was noticing while playing the game. This led to more research regarding the review bootcamp that Konami pulled with reviewers and ultimately on what would become my open world fatigue flow video. But it's not my flow video I want to focus on, it's actually my reviews afterwards that I think show the most truth to gaming review scores. There's three videos that I've done recently that I want to use as examples that show pros and cons to review scores. The first example I want to bring up is Rainbow Six Siege. Now overall I gave a very positive review towards Rainbow Six Siege and ultimately ended my review giving the game a 8 out of 10 great rating. Now, a strong majority actually agreed with my review and thoroughly enjoyed it, but there were a couple of comments of people disagreeing, which is perfectly fine. But there was one comment that stood out to me that I actually commented on, and we went through a very long dialogue, which is actually the framework for this video. The person who commented brought up that I didn't mention some aspect of the game, and ended their comment stating, This deserves an 8, but Fallout 4 a 7? I don't know man, I strongly disagree. I immediately responded back stating that he shouldn't have tried to compare Rainbow to Fallout since I said that they were really different types of games. And this is the first problem when it comes to review scores. Now when someone watches somebody who uses review scales such as Angry Joe or Jim Sterling, there is a justifiable mindset that people believe that every game that's reviewed by that person is on the exact same scale. Which means even if a game is in a total separate genre altogether, a person will be upset that you gave one game a higher score than another. 
the biggest example of this is how so many people get offended that these big publications give a game like Call of Duty a 8 or a 9 and give another game a 7 or an 8 and they get upset by this even though what they don't know is that one there's a high probability that the person who reviewed Call of Duty is not the person who reviewed that said other game or gave that said score and number two is the person reviewing probably has a different perspective than you when they give this said score going back to the Call of Duty example one person may review the newest Call of Duty under the guise of comparing it to the previous entries. Thus, if the newest one is better than, let's say, the other two, they might give it a higher review score. Now, there may be another reviewer on another site who gives Call of Duty Black Ops 3 a completely different score because he's putting the game up against, I don't know, let's say another FPS like Battlefield or Counter-Strike GO instead of its previous entries. Do you see what I'm trying to get at? These people have two different mindsets from the get-go while they're doing the review, and the review scores will reflect differently because they're in different mindsets. Which moves to my second example, my Assassin's Creed Syndicate review. Now in this review, I gave the game a 6 out of 10 and labeled it as mediocre. Now, the funny thing is, there was a lot of comments who didn't agree with my review score, stating that a 6 out of 10 was too good for the game and believe that the tag of mediocre didn't match well with the review score. The issue is not in the number, but it's in the person that perceives that number. Again, it always comes down to perspective. I had a certain scale in mind as well when I would give a game a certain scoring. Now, Jim Sterling has straight said he likes using the scale system, and I'm not gonna lie, after me using the scale system for a couple of reviews, I personally liked it too. It was fun to give at the end stamp of approval or that stamp of disagreement. It's, it's just something about that um, that just feels invigorating for anybody who is a reviewer. Now, there are some reviewers who don't use numbers. Instead, they use certain words at the end of the reviews. Now, the thing about this is, while they have removed the number, they still have a quantitative sort of review scale. Replacing a 10 instead calling it awesome-tacular or buy it on Blu-ray, good time, no alcohol required, you know, the things that Jeremy Johns does, is no different than a person giving a game a 6, a 7, an 8, or a 9, or a 10. The way that I set up my reviews is a 10 means it's absolutely flawless, which in my opinion, and I still stand with this, means is almost impossible due to the fact that there's no such thing as a perfect game. Uh, a 9 out of 10 is amazing or phenomenal. An 8 out of 10 is great. A 7 out of 10 is good. A 6 out of 10, in my personal opinion, is average or mediocre. A 5 out of 10 is below average. 4 means bad. 3 means horrible. 2 means terrible. And 1 means absolute garbage this shouldn't even exist if it has a zero but <laughs> uh you just should stop making games all together now the funny thing about my scale is if you compare it to let's say another reviewers like jim sterling's you'll actually notice there is actually a little difference if you look on his website he actually has a review score guide where he states each of his levels from one to ten the word that associates with that number, and a couple of sentences explaining what that exactly means. Now, this is the whole purpose of review scores. For him, he said a six is all right, and a five is mediocre. And, and when I read this, I was like, okay, and I actually agree with this, because from a quantitative state, a five out of 10 is in fact average. It is half of 10. So putting a five out of 10 and calling it mediocre, is correct but for me i put it as a six out of ten so you can see there is a difference and the thing is there is no right or wrong again the problem is even if you put words with the numbers you're combining qualitative and quantitative and this is where the biggest issue comes up with and it is perspective perspective is the key and context is needed for that perspective if i don't put in the description a detailed list like this stating each of the scorings and what exactly that number means a lot of things can be lost in translation when a person sees my final review score this is in fact the biggest flaw to the review scoring system there's barely any context given to the said number the thing you have to understand is over the years with technology getting easier and people being able to access information faster people don't really read these huge reviews anymore. They want the summed up version. They want information fast. They don't have time to read a three page review of how you feel towards a certain game. A lot of people when looking at reviews, for the most part, will always scroll to the last page or the last paragraph, read that reviewer's closing comments and look at the review score or look at whatever that statement may be. Whether it's picking this game up for $60 like what TBH does, each of these things, no matter if they're qualitative or quantitative, will lead to the same result. And that's why it doesn't matter 
matter if there's a review score or if there's not a review score because if a person's mindset is set on a certain thing they're going to perceive the review either in a positive or negative light either in a I agree or I disagree or maybe even sometimes in a neutral zone and even those three mindsets are guess what a quantitative state one two three agree disagree neutral and this leads to my final example my top 12 games of 2015. Now, when I did this, a lot of people had a lot of questions. One, why I didn't talk about each of the games and instead just used music, which is more of an artistic choice that I decided. Instead of me repeating things that I would have said already in my reviews for a lot of these games that were on the list, I instead wanted the games to speak for themselves, if you will. There was actually a couple of people who asked, is this in order? And this is where things get very tricky. See, I actually did this on purpose, but if you go back and you watch that video, you will find that I did not put a number on any of the games. The only sort of stamp that I put on any game was Witcher 3, which I labeled as my game of the year for last year. But other than that, from Mad Max all the way to The Witcher, you will not find anywhere in that video a number associated with any of those games. And even in the description, I stated that I wanted to show you guys my most memorable games of 2015. So when people ask me, was this an order? The truth is, it was not. Yeah, I had some people who were actually curious, bringing up that they were surprised that Life is Strange got the place that it got, even after my Mind the Ethos video and they were expecting it to be higher. I had some people who were surprised that Metal Gear Solid in the placing of the video was third, even though I was very critical of the game. And the truth is, it wasn't in order. Why? Because that was not the purpose of the video. It was to showcase the games that I had the most memorable experiences from, in no particular order. I removed the quantitative state of top 12, of top 10s, and I wanted the games to artistically speak to themselves. However, even when I did this, there were still people who were longing for that number, who were asking for that number. And that's where we start to see the truth when it comes to game review scores. It's not the review score that it's the problem, but it is the concept of people's perspectives and mindsets and human nature that causes the issue. The mindset of what a person sees when they see a certain number or they see a certain phrase or sentence that's being used to reflect a game. It is the state of putting order to the chaos. Chaos, if you will, is these different feelings we have. It's the different perspectives we have reviewing the game. It's the different mindsets we have going into reviewing these games. All these different things are chaos. They're all these different thoughts that all these different people have. Numbers put a sense of order on it. It's something that unanimously across the board, everybody accepts as logical and makes sense. Now, while we might not agree with these said numbers that a certain artistic piece of entertainment may have, what we can agree on is what exactly that number is. A 10 is a 10, a 1 is a 1, a 5 is a 5, a 6 is a 6. You see what I'm getting at is that even if we do remove the number when it comes to scoring, we're going to always come up with some sort of numerable scale by which we review. So while we may remove the numbers and replace them with phrases or replace them with sentences, it's ultimately still going to end with the same result. So in conclusion, there is no correct way. Qualitative isn't always right and quantitative isn't always right. Each of them have their pros and cons. And that's just something, honestly, we can't solve because this is just part of the human condition. It's something that we have to accept and learn to respect when it comes to reading or watching reviews. Not only do we have to understand what that number means, but we need to understand the person behind that number and the mindset that they bring when they're doing that review. And this is really only part one of me talking about game review scores. In the next part, I'm gonna go into completing a game for its review. And I wanna go into that perspective as it was brought up in the Gaming Illuminati podcast. And I feel that it is a fantastic topic that I should extrapolate with. So look forward to part two. And as always, I wanna thank all of you guys for watching. And I hope that this has been an insightful video for you because it's definitely been very eye-opening for me. Oh,